Hey guys, so we're uh, starting the live video here. So, um, just give everybody a second to get in here. Hello, hello. All right, so we're gonna be doing a live video and I'm gonna talk about uh, some of the alligator stuff that I do, alligator diving, things like that. But what's really cool is this live video is also going to be a giveaway and we're gonna give away some Cressy dive gear at the end, okay? So it should be pretty cool. And uh, just see a bunch of people, there's Cressy, they just joined. <laughs> so I see a bunch of people still joining in and um, just give it a second there. Cool photo behind me, thank you. It's actually a photo of a great white shark that I took myself. I took that in Guadalupe, Mexico. And uh, so I was out there doing some great white shark diving and since everybody always asks, yes, I did go outside the cage. So I was like, pretty awesome, all right? But uh, now that we're getting everybody in here, um, what I wanted to try to talk about is uh, basically the underwater gator stuff that I do, the diving, things like that. And I get a ton of questions about the gator dives and my underwater gator tours and how I go out in the wild with them and everything like that, okay? So first off, if you're not familiar with me or you, know, you don't know uh, what I'm talking about here, okay? Uh, I run an underwater gator tour in Homestead, Florida. And uh, there's nothing else like it in the world. I made it up, doesn't exist anywhere else. And I take people in the water and we go diving and swimming around with this gator named Casper. And Casper is about, he's a little bit under 10 feet long, he's about 250 pounds, and uh, he's an American alligator, and I have worked with him for over 12 years. Now he's a rescued American alligator, he came in as a nuisance gator. And so what that means, a nuisance gator is one that showed up in a backyard, got in a swimming pool, ate somebody's dog, stuff like this, okay? Now once that happens, they eat somebody's dog, they cause a problem like that, the state of Florida is gonna kill him. Okay, and this is what's really, really sad. Almost all nuisance alligators are shot and killed. Now, I'm uh, one of the nuisance alligator trapper agents. I work under one of the head guys here, and we actually go out and we catch the nuisance gators ourselves out of people's backyards. Now, the way that it works is that once a nuisance gator is caught, the state of Florida only allows two options. Either it's kept in captivity the rest of its life, or it's shot and killed. They don't allow relocation due to their homing ability. What that means, even if you took him 100 miles away and drop him off in the middle of nowhere, you give him a month, he'll go back to the exact same backyard he was caught from. Okay, so they have this homing ability. So that's why the state of Florida says, nope, you can't relocate them. They have to be killed or they have to be kept in captivity. All right. Now, all the other nuisance gator trappers, they typically kill them. We're the only group that actually saves them. And the reason for that is because to get paid as a trapper, you don't get paid as a trapper, okay? To be able to go out and catch the alligator, you don't get anything out of it because of liability. That way, if that gator ripped off your arm, the state's not responsible for you. You're on your own. You get a get well soon card, okay? So, the way that that works is if you want to make any money, you have to kill the alligator, sell the meat and the hide. And that's what all the other trappers do, okay? It's not to say that these are bad guys. They're not out there just trying to kill alligators for fun. They're doing their job. And the only way that they're gonna be paid for their job is by killing the alligator. Now, the group that I work with, we don't do that, obviously. So we volunteer our time entirely for free, no compensation. We don't get paid to do it. And we go out and we catch the gators out of people's backyards to rescue them. That's why I say all these animals are rescue alligators because they would have otherwise been shot and killed. So then we bring them to the rescue that we work with. And uh, so down at Everglades Outpost is where I do my underwater gator tours with Casper the Gator. Okay, so first we usually bring them to Everglades Holiday Park and then from there we usually go down to the outpost and that ends up being the permanent home for most of the nuisance gators, okay? So that's where he came from, that's where Casper came from, that's his background, everything like that. That's also why uh, a lot of people are like, oh, well, why is he in captivity? Why don't you let him go back out in the wild? We're legally not allowed to, okay? That is the only option, nuisance gator, either a bullet in the head or they're in captivity. And that's the reality of it. Don't blame me, I didn't make the rules, okay? But that's how it works, so that's why he's here. Now anyway, so what I do is I bring people in the water to swim with Casper, and it's really, really cool. So again, I've worked with him for over 12 years. He's a very, very calm animal, and I have trained him. Now that's a big surprise to a lot of people who don't understand. Yes, you can actually train an alligator. They're very, very intelligent animals. And so I have taught him uh, through positive reinforcement training. So when he does what I want him to do, I give him a treat. And so he actually knows specific words. You can check out some of my other videos on this where he comes when he's called, he actually knows his name, he knows specific words. I can be having a conversation with somebody and if I say 
throughout those words, if I say come here, he'll immediately turn and come towards me. I got several videos showing that. So it's actually really, really cool to see. Now, um, anyways, some of the questions that are popping up right there, I was just trying to look through. Have I dealt with Crocs? I've worked with many different crocodiles. I work with Crocs in uh, here in Florida, Mexico, Costa Rica, uh, Botswana, all over the place. I've worked with 12 different species of crocodilians all the way up to a 16 foot saltwater crocodile I used to do hand feeding shows with. So yes, you can look on my Instagram, you'll see lots of shots of me with Crocs. Uh, Everglades Outpost and Everglades Holiday Park are about an hour away from each other. Okay, Holiday Park is in Fort Lauderdale, Outpost is down in Homestead, okay? Now, uh, let's see, we're also going through some of the questions that they, uh, they had written up for this. So one of the other big questions people ask when uh, I'm in the water with an alligator, things like that, uh, what do you do if you come face to face with an alligator, what should you do? Well, first things first, don't get in that situation, okay? Now understand that I do go diving with alligators and crocodiles, I've dove with crocs here in Florida, and Costa Rica and Mexico. And uh, I actually did try in Botswana with the Nile Crocs, but the visibility killed us there. But anyways, um, so yeah, I have worked with and dove with these animals. And I'm gonna tell you right now, it is dangerous, it is not safe. Do not go do it in the wild. That's why I offer a tour where people can come and do it in a safe, controlled environment with a trained animal, okay? That's why I do that, So because I know people wanna do it. So come do it with me in a safe way on one of the tours. Do not go do this in the wild, please. Okay, now I do go out in the wild and I do swim with them and a lot of people are like, well, if you can do it, why can't I do it? Because I've been a professional alligator wrestler for over a decade. I'm trained to do this. I know how to do it. And that being said, it's still super dangerous for me. Even with all the knowledge and experience that I have, it is absolutely very dangerous. And I'm not gonna sit here and be like, it's no big deal, guys. I'm not scared. It's freaky, I'm not gonna lie to you. When I'm out there and I'm out in the wild, it is freaky. I've had multiple alligators try to attack me before. It's not a joke, okay? They will literally kill and eat you, all right? Um, I'm very much a realist about this. I'm gonna tell you, they're not out to get you. They don't come after people normally. If you stay on dry land, you're fine. Alligators don't come chasing after people. But when you get in the water with an alligator, from his point of view, his eyes are in the top of the surface and the only thing he sees from that point of view is the top of your head and your arms moving when you're swimming. So you look like small prey. So because of this misconception on their part, they're gonna come after you. They're gonna think that you're prey because that's all they can see. And I've had even a five foot alligator try to attack me in the wild, which is like no big deal. Like a five foot gator is like a lizard next to me, especially when I'm dealing with, you know, like 15 foot crocs sometimes. But that being said, that five foot gator, if he gets it behind you, you don't see him coming, he can kill you. If he grabs you by the back of your head, break your neck. So that's why I tell people, don't go out in the wild, okay? Really, really important, don't go out in the wild. Uh, it is very dangerous, don't try that, <laughs> okay? Now, so yeah, what do you do if one of them came to you and you're in this situation? How would you deal with it? Um, I mean, again, don't find yourself in that situation. The best thing you can do, if you can, if it's coming at you, try to fight for your life, um, but the way I like, the analogy I like to give is this is like asking like a, like, like a police officer, how do you handle a high stakes hostage situation? Well, first you'd have to understand really basic policing methodology and really basic parts of this equation before I can tell you how to do the most extreme part of it. And that's the same thing with this gator thing, you know? Well, how, what do you do if an alligator is attacking you in the water? Well, I mean, first you'd have to understand are you a really good swimmer? Do you understand alligator behavior? Do you understand alligator movement and behavior and mechanics? Do you understand what their body's capable of doing? Do you understand what your body's capable of doing? You know, and you have to be able to do all these different things to be able to catch up to the point where you're now gonna be able to find this information useful. But anyways, just skip past that because I know people want an answer. Try to push them away. I mean, fight for your life. I know of certain instances where people have been attacked by an alligator in the water and it depends on how motivated the animal is. A lot of times when the alligator comes in, he's investigating because again, all he sees is the top of your head, you look small and he's gonna come in and check it out. And if you turn around and you fight, he's like, oh wow, that thing's a lot bigger than I thought it was. And they let you go. I've heard of that happening. I've heard of people fighting off an alligator, hitting it in the face, the gator lets go like, whoa, this thing is not what I thought it was and they let you go. That does happen. What also happens if it's a big enough alligator, he doesn't care, he's not, undeterred by your movements. I know of one guy that had an alligator coming at him. I met this guy, he told me the story personally, and this was a large alligator. It was like a 12, 13 foot gator came at him in the water and he pushed it away and it came at him again and he pushed it away and it came at him again. He's trying to hit it, he's trying to fight it. Multiple times he pushed it away. Now normally on a normal gator coming after you like that, 
one push away would be enough for the alligator to be like, whoa, this thing is not what I thought it was. I'm going to leave it alone. But this gator was big. He wasn't intimidated by that. Went to push it away again. Again, multiple times. He pushed it away. You can push under the jaw right here. Pushed it away. Pushed it away. Went to push it again. Hand slipped. Gator grabbed his arm. Snapped his arm at the elbow. Ripped it right off. That's reality. Okay, that's why I tell people don't put yourself in this situation. Because even if you do things the right way, and he was doing it exactly the way he was supposed to, accidents happen, there's a slip, or the animal just does something you didn't, didn't think it was going to do. And it took his arm off right at the elbow, doesn't come back. Okay, I, when I met the guy, he's like this. All right, so that, that's, a, that's a real reality there. So that's why I tell people best thing you can do, don't end up in the wild, in the water with any kind of crocodilian. That's a really, that's very, very dangerous. Okay. Don't do that. Again, if you want to swim with an alligator, come do one of my tours. Keep it safe. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to get all doom and gloom, but yeah, no, it, it, it's not a joke. These are very powerful apex predators. Okay. Now, um, what was my first encounter with an alligator in the water? Um, I have to think about that. I've been doing this a long time, guys. I've, I'm born and raised in Florida. I've spent my whole life here. So the first time I was out there, uh, well, you know what? I remember one of the first times I was in an area and um, I saw an alligator in clear water and I'm watching the behavior and everything like that. And I'm like, I think they're not as bad as people think, you know? And I remember having that kind of epiphany moment of being like, you know, I don't think they're, uh, I don't think they're the man eaters people think they are. And, and, to juxtapose that's what I just said about a guy getting his arm ripped off. They're not the man eaters. They're not out to get you. There's over a million in the state of Florida. If they were out to get people, you'd have people dying every day. That's not to say they're not dangerous though. Okay. It's the, the reality is often in the middle thing. People think in extremes. People think bloodthirsty killing machine, perfectly tame, won't hurt you. Reality's in the middle. Okay. They're not out to get you. They're not bloodthirsty killing machines, but they are top predators. And if you end up in their environment, eh, some every once in a while, one of them's going to try you. You know, I, I guess that's the best way to try to put it. But, um, oh, here's one. Uh, somebody just said, uh, they're not usually in colder water of the springs. You're wrong. 100% wrong. They love the springs. Okay. They do not care about cold water. This is a common myth that I have people say. Where they're like, oh, well, in the springs, you know, there's no gators. I'm like, yes, there are. They remove them and shoot them. I have talked to the guys that work there. If a gator goes into the spring where people swim, they remove it, they shoot the alligator. Okay, they 100% live in the springs. If you want evidence of this, go to Silver Springs where you're not allowed to swim because there's so many alligators and they let the alligators stay. Now, you're allowed to kayak there. Okay, do a kayak or canoe trip through Silver Springs. You can go right through the springs. Loads of gators. Trust me, they do not care about the temperature gradient. Okay, alligators naturally range up to North Carolina, where it literally snows. You're gonna have alligators with their nose sticking up out of the ice. Okay, so 100% don't care about the temperature. 72 degrees is nothing to an animal that can literally sit in 32 degree water with its nose sticking out of the ice. Okay, so yeah, don't worry. Okay, <laughs> but uh, anyways. So, um, let's see some of the other questions. I, I got a little list of questions here from, uh, from Cressy, by the way, again, at the end of this, if you didn't hear me say this in the beginning, at the end, we are going to be doing a gear giveaway. Okay. And so I'm sponsored by Cressy. Uh, they do all my dive gear. Um, they make amazing gear. And so at the end, we are going to do a giveaway with some dive gear. Okay. Got, got some masks up here behind me from Cressy. Okay. So, uh, at the end. All right. But I got a couple more questions I'm going to, I'm going to get through right here. So as far as um, one of the other questions was, what are my gator training techniques? And so I make them all uh, as positive reinforcement training. Okay. And so what that means is I don't punish them. Uh, if you see me when I'm training the gators, I always have a stick in my hand. Uh, the stick is not to hit them. I never, ever, ever hit the alligators with the stick. Okay. Because that's going to make them not like me. I don't want them afraid of me. I don't want them to dislike me. Uh, but I also need the stick to block them because I'm dealing usually with multiple alligators at once. And, um, yeah, they're going to try to eat you, you know? So that's why I have a stick and I block them with the stick. Okay, that's why I have it. But no, I don't ever hit them with it. And we keep everything as positive reinforcement training. So what I'll do is I'll call him over. Um, like, let's say I'm training Casper, something like that. And I'll give him a little food reward. And that's going to teach him to associate the command with getting fed. So it's a positive interaction for him. Okay. And uh, somebody just asked, how long have I worked with Casper? Over 12 years. Okay. Uh, let's see. Here's one. A very super common question I get. 
uh, what inspired me to do what I'm doing right now, and what is my career advice for people that want to work with animals, okay? Now, first off, career advice, that one is the most common question that I get from people, and that's why I'm gonna tell you right now, check out the YouTube video that Gabby and I made on this because it's a half hour long and it covers all the super basic questions everybody asks about like college degree, whether you have one, what you should do, where you should work, things like that. It's on our YouTube channel called Florida's Wildest. So check that out, please. Again, it's called Florida's Wildest. That is a very in-depth career advice video that we made on there, okay? But the short and dirty of it, um, how do you work with animals? The best thing you can do, volunteer at a place that's usually the first and best step is volunteer somewhere, gain experience, get your foot in the door. You're probably not gonna ever get a job where you actually get paid to do this from the start. You're gonna have to volunteer somewhere and basically just kinda show your worth, gain experience, and then eventually you might get hired somewhere. But I can also tell you that working in the animal business is really hard, okay? It's, it's not easy. Uh, there's a lot of people that want to do it, and there's a lot of people that do it for free. So if you actually want to make a living and get paid working in the animal industry or being a biologist or things like that, you really got to put your time in. I strongly recommend college. I have a bachelor's of science degree in environmental studies, and uh, that definitely helps me out significantly because if I'm going into a job, you need the experience, but then also having the degree is going to have people take you a lot more seriously. Now, what inspired me to want to be able to do this stuff and everything like that? Um, well, when I was a kid, I grew up kind of in the middle of nowhere. Uh, where I grew up, we lived below the poverty line. I didn't have any other kids in my street. I didn't really have any other friends. And so I just went out in the woods and that's all I did. I was out in the woods and I'd be catching snakes and lizards and turtles and everything else. And uh, as I got bigger, they kind of got bigger kind of thing. And uh, I've always loved wildlife and I'm like, you know, this is, this is what I want to do. This is what makes me happy. I love animals and I want to try to work with animals. And I uh, moved down to South Florida for college. I'm from Central Florida. And I moved down to South Florida for college and started going to college there. And I got my first job doing venomous snake shows, which is pretty sick. I used to do shows with cobras, rattlesnakes, all kinds of crazy stuff. And uh, well, actually back that up a little bit when I was in Central Florida, when I was 15, I volunteered in a nature center and I got to work with their alligator. And I guess that's when I really started like working with alligators uh, professionally, if you will, was back then, okay? So that's kind of how I got started on that. Um, somebody said, can you tell me why aren't there any tegus in Florida? Well, there are. Uh, tegus are an invasive species in South Florida, There's tons of them. Um, I actually have a tegu here that I caught at a gas station as a baby and I kept them and uh, we use them as an educational animal. Um, just kind of look through everything and I want to thank everybody for the support and everything. Uh, somebody said, where do I do shows at? So I do alligator uh, shows at Everglades Holiday Park in Fort Lauderdale and then I do my underwater gator swimming tours at Everglades Outpost and Homestead. All right, and let's uh, see the next question on my little list right here. Um, oh, how can people help gators and crocs? That's a really good one too. So how can you help out with these animals? So if you heard me talking before about nuisance alligators and um, everything like that. Oh, somebody just said, have you ever dealt with a great white? Yes, that one. Okay, <laughs> I took that picture. For anybody who didn't catch me saying that before, uh, that's a great white photo that I took myself in Guadalupe, Mexico. And uh, I was there, yes, I went outside the cage and uh, it was really awesome. And somebody said, how did me and Gabby meet? Um, kind of through the, through the animal industry and uh, somebody actually introduced us to each other on a thing asking for advice about animals. But uh, anyways, I was trying to say, um, how can you help gators and crocs on your own? So uh, if you heard me before, I was talking about nuisance alligators and the big problem that we have in there. The big problem is not nuisance gators, it's nuisance people. Okay, and uh, so one of the biggest problems we have nuisance people is people feeding them. Once you feed them, they learn to associate you with food. You don't have the food, you are the food. That's one of the main reasons why somebody ends up getting bit or hurt by an alligator is because it was fed by people. So don't ever feed them. It's illegal to feed them in the wild, at least here is in Florida, and most places it's also illegal. It's also a really bad idea because the animal loses his fear of people, might attack a person, but then also because he's lost his fear of people, he's probably going to be killed for it by somebody else later down the line. So that's why I would say don't ever feed them. Uh, another good way you can help is by just educating your friends and family that these are not bloodthirsty killing machines. They're not out to get you. They're not gonna come chasing you down and climbing in your bedroom window at night. A lot of people are very afraid of this. They're not out to get you, but also educate them of the reality. 
If you do dumb things, you win dumb prizes. You will get bit. If you're feeding the alligator, if you're trying to swim in their habitat, if you're trying to harass them, uh, yeah, you'll get hurt. You know, they're not, again, you got to not think in extremes. They're not bloodthirsty killers, but they're not tame puppies. You have to respect them. So again, learning to coexist and live alongside the animals is probably the best advice and trying to raise awareness of people around you, not to be afraid of them, you know, and the best things you can do, or you can also teach people to do, don't feed them, don't swim in their habitat, keep your kids and your pets away from the water's edge. We get that one a lot where uh, somebody's dog gets eaten by an alligator. I mean, it happens like almost daily in Florida. Somebody's dog gets eaten by the alligator. It's like, well, yeah, dude, don't let your dog near the water's edge. Keep your dog on a leash. If it's a body of water in Florida, it has alligators in it. Keep your pets away from the water's edge. That's super important, okay? We've actually had multiple fatalities in Florida where somebody's dog gets grabbed by an alligator and the person tries to fight the alligator to get their dog back. That's a really bad plan. Not gonna go well for you, okay? But uh, anyways, let me, let me look at some of these other questions, guys. Um, are the snakes killing all the alligators? Okay, so by snakes, if you're talking about the Burmese python, so Burmese pythons are an invasive species here in South Florida, and they do kill and eat alligators. Now, they're not killing all of them. Uh, pythons will eat up to about a six-foot alligator. Okay, so far, that's been the biggest one. We'll see. I wouldn't be surprised if a larger python gets a larger alligator than that, but usually that's about as big as it can get. It is a big problem. They do eat our native animals, but the alligators eat the pythons too. You know, it depends on who gets who first and kind of who's bigger and who got the drop on who. It's a really big about ambush there, okay? Um, are there certain times of day or season to be more aware? As far as alligators go, yeah, absolutely. At night, they're much more active. At uh, dusk or at night, definitely. That's when they like to hunt a lot more. That's a much more dangerous time of day. Um, certain times of year, the seasons, like right now we're in the breeding season. Um, a lot of people talk about that makes them a lot more likely to attack. I, I don't know if I would say that exactly likely to attack. It gets them moving a lot more. Okay, so if a male gets kicked out of his area by another male, he's going to end up in a new spot, which might be your backyard. Okay, so that does happen a lot this time of year. They're moving around a lot. Okay. Um, let's see. What is a typical day of an alligator in the wild? Just hang out. Just chilling. Okay. Uh, we often think of them as being animals that are like really aggressive. And they got to be having territorial fights and they're hunting and they're attacking. And nope. Now, most of their time is literally spent just chilling, okay? They're just hanging out. Uh, territorial fights do happen, super highly exaggerated in the frequency. Most alligators are actually pretty darn peaceful lives. They just hang out all day, they're just chilling. Fights do happen, yeah, sure they do, um, but realistically, they're pretty peaceful, okay? Fights are not nearly as common as people think they are. And the same with how often they eat. They only eat like, we feed our gators in captivity once a week, and most of our gators are overweight. Now, if you're surprised by this, you're like, wait, what? How do they only eat once a week? You gotta remember, these are cold-blooded ectotherms. They don't produce their own body heat. Therefore, they have a very small metabolic requirement compared to you. Like, one of my alligators that weighs 250 pounds is gonna eat less in a year than your 30-pound dog because your dog produces his own body heat. It's an endotherm, just like you. Gators don't do that, so they actually eat very little. So most of the time, they're just hanging out, they're just chilling, okay? All right, now I'm um, trying to look through some of these. Do I feed turtles to gators? No, 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 no. Uh, so when you see turtles living alongside the gators in a zoo, gators are smart. They know that if they're gonna get free, easy food later down the line, a lot of times they don't bother with other things, okay? Um, now, that being said, uh, we don't have any turtles in the enclosure with our alligators because yeah, they do try sometimes. Um, it can work, it can work out sometimes, um, but it's gotta be a pretty big turtle. It depends on the size of the turtle, size of the alligator. I don't recommend it because it might not go very well, but sometimes it does work out, okay? Um... Let's see. Is it dangerous to swim in lakes in Florida? Yes, stay out of the water. Keep on saying that. Don't go swimming in fresh water in Florida. There are gators out there, okay? Let's see. Uh, when's my next expedition? Um, well, this whole coronavirus thing has really messed things up for me, but I am planning on going back to the Peruvian Amazon in October, and uh, that's my Amazon trip I do every year, which is an open invite. If anybody wants to go and join that, you can, okay? If you want to do it, send me an email, and it's, uh, it's pretty awesome. We're out in the middle of nowhere out hiking around. Okay, is the St. John's River infested with gators? No, 
You cannot infest an area where you naturally live. Do you infest your own home? No, it's where you live, okay? They're supposed to be there. They were there first. Uh, native animals don't infest native habitat. That's not how that works. I grew up on the St. John's. I've been out there a million times. I'm from Brevard County, okay? So they do not infest it. That's where they're supposed to be. If anything, humans infest that area. They're not supposed to be there, okay? Um, let's see some of the other. Can caiman crossbreed with alligators? No, genes are too different. They cannot hybridize, okay? Uh, certain croc species can hybridize, but uh, no, caiman and alligators don't hybridize. Um, how does Florida regulate individuals with exotic animals or reptiles? So Florida actually, they do a pretty good job. Uh, so to own any kind of exotic or dangerous animals in Florida, for most of them, you have to actually exhibit a thousand hours of experience under a licensed permitted person and then send that into the local government and then they're going to review and then they also do inspections on your property to determine whether or not you're going to be able to have exotic wildlife. So Florida actually does a pretty darn good job compared to most other states. Okay. Uh, man, there's so many questions, guys. I'm just, ooh, I, there's no way I can keep up here. Okay, <laughs> I'm trying. Uh, let me go back to my little thing here. And you know, again, a reminder for everybody at the end, we are doing that. Uh, we're going to be doing a giveaway for some Cressy dive gear. So this is one of the masks um, sponsored by Cressy and they help me up with all my dive gear. It's really good gear. Okay. But uh, some of the other quick questions on here. Um, what are some of the things that people don't know about alligators and crocodiles? So I think one of the biggest things that a lot of people don't know about these animals is that they are intelligent thinking creatures, that they're not bloodthirsty killing machines. Now, when a new situation comes up, they're going to investigate it and they're going to make their own decision based on their past behavior and their past experiences on whether or not or about what they're gonna do about the situation. What I mean by this is if an alligator sees you by the water's edge or sees you in the water, depending on what his past experiences are, it's gonna dictate how he's going to approach this situation. He's not just gonna be like, person, kill, eat, oh. Like, no, that's not how it works. He's gonna see a human, he's gonna think, what is that thing? What is my past experience with that thing? What should I do about this thing in my environment? Now, if that is past experiences, he's been fed by humans, he's gonna remember that and he's gonna be like, Oh, those things feed me. I'm going to go over there and try to get a free meal, and which might end up being your hand. Now, if he's never seen a human before, he's probably going to be like, oh, I don't know what that thing is. I'm going to stay away, or I'm going to watch it from a distance and try to figure out whether or not it's potential prey. Want to know how I know? This is my personal experience I'm talking from of swimming with hundreds of wild alligators. And I see wild alligators do different stuff all the time. When I'm out in the wild swimming, sometimes I see one, it looks at me, takes off in the other direction. It's like, whoa, I've never seen that thing in the water before. I have no idea what that is. And they're terrified of me. Some of them are terrified of me. They take off. Other ones I see are curious and they watch me and they swim around. You see them kind of giving you this kind of side eye and they're like, mm, I don't know what that thing is. I'm watching. I'm trying to figure it out. And I've seen other ones that see me immediately turn beeline right from my head because they've been fed by people before. And that's, again, why you don't ever want to feed them. And I've had them come right at me before. And I've had other ones that see me. And you can see, I mean, I can recognize it because I've worked with them for so long. I can see the difference between a gator that's been fed and a gator that sees me as possible prey. And I've seen other ones come in, circle around, try and come in behind you. That's predatory. They're trying to figure out what you are and they think you might be prey. So it totally depends on the animal's past experience as to what he's going to do and how he's going to act. Okay. Um... Somebody said, oh, the black dots on the mouth. Uh, those are the integumentary sensory organs, those little black dots you see along the mouth on an alligator. And those are very sensitive to touch. It's actually 10 times more sensitive than a human fingertip, which are very different than those little black dots. These up here are ampullae of Lorenzini on the great white shark, and those give them an electrosensory ability. Okay, they might look similar, totally different function, not the same thing, okay? And again, if... Uh, People didn't hear me say that earlier. That's a great white shark photo that I took myself. I took that in uh, Guadalupe, Mexico, okay? All right, and uh, let's see, trying to look at some of the other questions. What are some body language from gators that allow you to determine their behavior or actions? That's a very good question. Unfortunately, there's not a very good answer because they don't give you anything to go on, okay? That's what makes it really hard working with these guys. Alligators, um, they're an ambush predator because of this they are pretty much expressionless, okay? So when I'm working with them, it's super hard to read them. Even when I'm working and training somebody on how to work with alligators, sometimes I just tell them like, look, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what 
I can't explain to you what I see, but I can pick something up. My subconscious can read them better than my conscious mind, if you will. So a lot of times I'll see something that like me doesn't see, but some part of me sees and I'm like, oh, he's gonna do this. How do you know? I don't know what's a feeling I got because that's what my experience has taught me. I can't even really key in on what it is I'm noticing. So it's actually really hard to read them. Um, but some really basic stuff, if it's hissing, it's mad at you, okay? If its mouth is open and it's swimming towards you, that's not a good sign, okay? So there are some really basic things, you know, um, but otherwise it is actually really hard to read them. Um, when you're watching them in the wild, when you see them swimming along, if they puff their back up out of the water and you can see their back comes up and their tail comes up, that's him signaling to other alligators, like, look how big I am, they do that a lot. Um, or if they're bellowing, that's a really cool one, that's very obvious where they, uh, they, they arch their head and their tail and they do this really kind of grunty sound that's really cool. Uh, when the males do it, the water on their back goes up in like reverse raindrops. It's really, really cool to see. So when they do that, uh, that's a male uh, asserting himself to impress the females and intimidate the other males. The females will also bellow too. The water doesn't go up when they do it though. And again, that's just kind of to show their size and their social standing, okay? So that's, that's always really cool. What? Okay. All right, guys. Well, you know, I'm, uh, I've been going for a long time here and it's going to kick me off in a minute. So I'm going to go ahead and end this live video. If you stay tuned after, I'm going to be sharing some, uh, some pictures on my story that's going to talk about the giveaway for some Cressy dive gear that we're going to do. Okay. So follow that after this live video, go on Cressy's page, check out what they're doing, and uh, you're going to be able to get into this giveaway for some Cressy dive gear. Okay. And I want to thank everybody for tuning in. If you enjoyed this, watch for the next one I'm going to do. I'm going to save this to my story and you can comment on my last post and let me know that you enjoyed the live video. Okay. Thanks you. Thank you so much for tuning in guys and all the awesome questions. Hope you had fun. And again, stay tuned for the uh, dive gear giveaway. Thank you so much.